how is this going to work? Like, how am I really going to learn anything from being around people that feel like they've already arrived because <laughs> they recorded right. a song in the closet, you know? So I just got tired of it. And I literally, Trina, I told my sister, I was like, I want to leave. I don't know where I want to go. So I put all my stuff in the storage. I applied at places all over the world. And we packed up the car and went to New Orleans for Essence. And on our way to Essence, on our way to New Orleans, my sister got a job. And then I got an interview. Wow. <laughs> Look at God. I had an interview like that week. Yeah. So that's how I got to New Orleans. And wow. Yeah. It's that's crazy. amazing. I love it. Look. <laughs> oh, no. I don't get it. It's okay. You get it. <laughs> I was like, yes, Lord, come on with the cancellations. <laughs> Oof, we going in it. Now let's get it. I don't know if you know this, but I'm black. Uh, am I good? <laughs> no, uh, yeah. He's with the best of them. And he's oh, one of my favorite men at the Alpha side. <laughs> that, that intro sounds like much more than who I actually am. <laughs> All right, so my guest of honor is a woman with a vision to implement change. She's a go-getter, mother, and humanitarian, widely known for having big dreams. Her personal mission includes helping others to realize and reach their full potential. And whether she's working her day job as an executive assistant, working live theater, or her nonprofit, The Now and Later Effect, that's exactly what she does. She embodies Black excellence, and she exudes elegance. I believe that her dedication to being the change will lead her to monumental success. Today, my guest of honor is Jamie Berry. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much, Trini. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, really mean it, though. I really do mean it. Thank you. I appreciate it, and I receive it. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Just trying to stay safe and alive out here in these streets. Yes. You? yes. A little rousing Ready, right. Ready to catch a flight. <laughs> Like, you know, trying to stay I safe, mean, can't wait till it's over, ready to like make a move. I'm not gonna lie, uh, December, gone or, gone or not, I got to go somewhere. I got to go. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I'm like, I need just like a, just a little go away. Like, yeah. it can be to a random place. I don't know. I don't care if I'm going to Delaware. We need to go. I need to go somewhere. Mm. <laughs> Shoot. What's um, up, Delaware? <laughs> no, nah, you're right. What's up, Delaware? I always make I always make this joke that my husband doesn't live in Texas. He up north somewhere. So I think it's funny. If he actually come out to be from the north, I'm gonna be laughing because I manifest that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how has um quarantine been going for you? It's been good. Um it's been okay for me. I mean, I feel like I am probably one of the most outgoing introverts. Yeah. People don't know that but I am an introvert um and I think I mean I have you know personality I enjoy being around people for the most part but for like a little bit mm -hmm. like okay it's where time to go. <laughs> you know so yeah so it's been okay um I've had a couple of small things um you know like a little pod Mm -hmm. um so we're managing my son was already homeschooled so that wasn't anything that we had to kind of get into or anything mm -hmm. I think the biggest part for us has really just been not traveling um yeah. and we are just in fine I mean it's what we have to do to make sure that we're safe so yeah we'll just keep doing it and hope that soon this will be over and we can move on I sure do hope so I really do. Um, I, I feel like 2020 has really taught us a lot. Like everybody has at least one big takeaway from 2020. So tell me, tell me what's your biggest takeaway from last year? Um, I feel like my biggest takeaway from 2020 was to kind of stay in the flow. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's, I don't even really know if that was my biggest takeaway from 2020 or if I just got it in 2020. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, that makes I sense. Like, yeah, I feel like maybe I was supposed to already have had that, or maybe that's a lesson that I've been kind of like dealing with relinquishing, relinquishing. Can't even say it. That that shows <laughs> you I can't do it. But um, let 
letting go some of the control and not getting so attached to things going a specific way um and just rolling with the punches you know oh yeah so that, yeah, that's, that's a big one that's a big yeah. one yeah it's a constant one it's a mm-hmm. constant one for me because it's like you'll get that lesson um with um working professionally but then as a mom I have to get it with trying to run a business. I have to get it. I have to get it as a daughter, even on the interstate. Let me tell you, <laughs> I, could be, <laughs> I was telling somebody the other day, like, you know, you just having a bad day and it seems like nothing's going right. Mm-hmm. And then you like drop your keys or something, you just lose it. That for me is sitting at a red light too long. I will lose my mind. After I didn't have a rough day, honey, I will cry it out at a red light. Yeah. So I'm just letting go of some of the control and just trying to like be in touch with myself and and everybody else, I guess, just in a different way and, and trying not to be so um, intense <laughs> with some things, just letting it happen happens as it happens you know so it, it's kind of it's difficult to do that at times because when you're passionate about something it's like you feel you either feel like you need to be all in or you either feel like um I'm not doing enough mm-hmm. so I definitely can agree yeah. with you when it comes yeah. to that and like relinquishing you know delegating and doing things like that it's it's definitely difficult mm-hmm. to get to that point so I feel you mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah even with um with um my son like i was saying i did this um was facilitating these courses where we talked about um different characteristics of white supremacy which this is going to sound like i'm going way far off for me but i promise you you go right ahead (laughs) (laughs) and one of the characteristics of white supremacy is things have to be done a specific way like there's only one way to do the thing and I'm learning that with my son, like, just relax, let him make his bed up the way he wants to. Like, it does not mean that it's wrong just because it's not the way I do it. You know, let him do his things the way he wants to do it. Because I, because the reality of the situation is I have enough stuff, like, to really control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the things that I can't control or the things that just aren't that big of a deal, like, just let it go and move on to something else that's you know that can really use you you know your energy yeah and you by doing that you're gonna like set your son up to know what his voice is which is a great thing because a lot of times parents don't realize they snatched that right their voice right up out their kids so this is a good thing so he'll be like creative and like free to flow into that so that's Mm. a good thing well thank you she's like oh it's a process (laughs) yes i'm gonna hear your voice (laughs) <laughs> and I'm struggling. It's a good thing. It's a like good thing. thing. He's gonna be a little explorer. Just let him let him explore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Jamie, tell us a little bit about your background, where you from, where you went to school, all those different things. Well, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. Um yeah. and I went to I feel like I went to a lot of schools. I mean I went to, I'm from the South side. I went to Carter Park Elementary School. I also went to uh, Applied Learning Center. I went to um, Trimble Tech. I went to, I lived in (laughs) Temple, Texas for a little while and I went to a school there. And then I went to some other school. I feel like I'm I'm leaving something out. I I know (laughs) I am, but I I can't get it right now. But yeah, so just schools kind of really, scattered across Fort Worth um and yeah so very humble beginnings Um, and I don't know how deep into this you want me to go but um I was raised my my, both of my I was born to two heroin addicted parents so I dealt with that I'm leaving out Crowley I went to Crowley middle school that's what I'm leaving out Crowley yes (laughs) Because I lived with my sister part of the time um, mm-hmm. when my parents were away. So I lived with my sister and I went to Crowley when I was living with her. So, um, you know, just like really scattered across Fort Worth um, and kind of, I feel like honestly thinking about it now, like all the different schools that I went to, 
kind of can you can really probably just figure me out if you just look at the schools like I feel like I have a little bit of each of them in me mm-hmm. so so yeah yeah look our schools definitely play a huge role in like our development because you're surrounded by so many different types of people like yeah. we met like we met at Trimble Tech and I mean we both on the south side it's just a lot of things that influence you or like help you to develop who you are you know as you transition mm-hmm. And not only that, but like Trimble Tech and Applied Learning Center, both of those schools didn't really have a district per se. Yeah. Um, so you was with kids from Stop Six, from Eastwood, from the North Side. Yep. You know, um, at my middle school, we went to to school with children that were, were from Central America. Um, It was like a whole other side of the school where they had, and they were coming here to learn English and to learn different things. So very early, I was exposed to kids that were just from all over the place, sharing a library with them, sharing a bathroom with them, you know, learning about how they live and and different things like that. Um, So yeah, girl. How do you, how do you feel like your, um, your upbringing impacted you with communicating with people at school though like how do you feel like that was it a hindrance or did it help you open up more um I feel like it helped me um but I don't know because (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it helped me but I also feel like some of it is just me you Mm -hmm. know it's like how much how much you are you without all of your experiences you know Um, but I do feel like going to all those different schools and being exposed to so many different kinds of people, I kind of look for that now. Yeah. yeah. I kind of crave it a little bit, you know, I worked in hospitality a very long time and I loved, um, meeting people from just all over the world, you know? And I used to say then, like, I just felt like it was, when I had my blog and when I was really pursuing theater very heavily and um, just really trying to be like this light bulb for people, I felt like that was the perfect place for me to be, mm-hmm. you know, because you meet people, they coming in maybe for a funeral. I didn't met people who getting ready to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus, here's your key. <laughs> like, it's not your key. <laughs> Here are your keys. Um, people who getting ready to cheat, people who looking for somebody that is, um, young kids that are running away, you know, just all kinds of different things. And so it's just a really unique position to be in where you can kind of leave a little bit of that with, with them, you know, and it was, I I would have people, I'll never forget. Um, I stopped working at this hotel and went back like randomly two years later. Um, and just so happened I was there that day I was just there um and I answered the phone and it was this lady she said thank you so much she said I stayed there this long ago you have no idea how much you helped me I would get calls like this all the time like and it was just from things that came so natural to me um that I didn't really necessarily think I was changing their life or like giving them a different outlook on things. I was just there and I was just being myself, you know? And so, um, so yeah, I definitely feel like being exposed to all those different kinds of kids and cultures and upbringings and all of that, I feel like it gave me a little bit of edge. Um, and I'm a stickler for communication. Yeah. Pet peeve, honey. I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> If you if you're not communicating with me, that's something that I I really I'm even still learning to work through. Um, so yeah, I answered that for you. Oh, you did. You definitely did. And I think that it's interesting that you said the things that come natural to you, you didn't realize will help other people. I think we always downplay it because it's so mm-hmm. natural to us. Yeah. Like we're so used to like this is just what I do. I'm just being me. Yeah. But we don't realize how many people don't even have that to do like they can't do it they don't even feel comfortable being who they are like yeah and that hurts my feelings I'm very sad for people who can't like just be just be who you are 
like naturally. Yeah. It's sad. It but is sad. It's it sad. Is. Or also people who don't feel comfortable being themselves in a professional environment. Like I would get to work and baby, I would clean that desk down. You know, I'm really just the old lady at heart. So I would get in there, <laughs> clean that desk. Wipe the phone off because I don't want your germs. <laughs> yeah, this was pre-COVID. And, um, yes, yes. <laughs> Pre-COVID. Oh, I've always been, yes, I have <laughs> literally always been like COVID-minded without even knowing about COVID. But yeah, right. I would clean up and then just get down to making stuff. If I saw somebody that was down or they checked in, they said they were down, I would make them a little gift basket with whatever we had at the front desk. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to like print off little stuff from books and leap slide it under the door you know just whatever I thought they would they needed as a human not necessarily as just a guest that's beautiful but just as a human to like smile or just feel you know I don't want to get too much into my hospitality career because <laughs> I work night audit so I got some stories but um yeah but yeah it was it was it was, it was, <laughs> it was um it was a good place. It was a good place for me to really just be able to be myself and be able to reach people and, and all that. So yeah. Yes. Well, how did you how did you discover your passion or how did you know that you wanted to go into the career that you're in right now? The what do you mean career as far as being an executive assistant or um uh, well I'm talking about just talking about your nonprofit, all that, all your passion work and things like that. How did you know that that was something that you wanted to do? Um, I don't really see, and that's the thing. I don't really even look at it that way. I guess maybe it's kind of weird. I'm just, I'm literally just doing what I do. Like mm -hmm. if I did not have the now and later effect, I would still be feeding the homeless. I would still be trying to reach the youth. Um, so for a long time, um, and even up until recently, I was been, I've been doing the same thing. I just decided to do it, um, as a nonprofit so that I could get more oh, resources. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that was really the only reason, um, so that I could get donations and things like that from larger companies. Um, yeah. but listen, if everybody tells me, no, I'm still going to do it. Like right. I'm going to figure out a way to make sure that it gets done. And it just, that's just the way that it's been for me, you know, like I'll plan something. And if everybody, Walmart, Sam's, whoever else says they don't have any donations, then it's, you know, and that's one of the things I love about being from the hood. Like, yep. you, you're not going to tell me no. And just, and then I'm just going to be like, okay, well maybe. Okay. Next year. No. <laughs> okay. Appreciate you. I'm going to ask again, but. I got you. And I'm going to figure something else out for this time around, you know, and, mm -hmm. and just keep going with it. So I don't really know um, if I discovered anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's just something you love. That's just, it's just yeah, something it's you love something to do. That I love doing. I will share with you though, that when I was younger, um, I experienced, I witnessed somebody that was very close to me become homeless. Mm -hmm. And it was just heartbreaking. Just, just, I mean, Trina, a lot of times when I sit back now at my age now and I think about my life as like a child, mm -hmm. I will cry down now. Yeah. And then I, it just never affected me in that way. You know, like little Jamie, I was just like I am now where I say, I'm going to figure something else out or whatever. I was just like that then where I was just like, okay, what's the solution? What can we do? You know, but if sitting now and thinking about back then, it makes me sad to know that I was dealing with so much at such a young age. Um, but I do think that that, that witnessing that um, left an imprint on me. And yeah. even though, giving is part of my nature and nurturing is part of my nature um it kind of just made me want to like make sure that everybody knows that um you know for like all the other little jamies in the world they know that somebody's out there taking care of their family mm -hmm. that somebody that doesn't care if they're on drugs 
don't care what the story, you know, I want to know what your story is and what happened and all that. But if it's something where you were a thief or you robbed a bank and you hungry, come on and eat. <laughs> yeah, right. You still got to eat. Like, none of that matters to me that you gambled the money away and that's why you're outside. Okay, I hope you learned your lesson. We're not going to do that again. Come on and eat and let's get these resources to figure out how we can find you a home. You know, so... Yeah. Um, I definitely think that left an imprint on me, but I still do feel like um, I would still be doing something like this. I if believe I, you. But, yeah. Tell me what your, your mission statement is, your actual mission statement for now, the Now and Later Effect. Well, the mission of the Now and Later Effect is to help end homelessness by providing the less fortunate with the necessary resources to acquire and maintain personal and financial growth, self-sufficiency, and increased awareness of their self-worth and the high quality of life that can boost our economy. Um, so that is the mission of my nonprofit. We're called the Now and Later Effect. And you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram at the Now and Later Effect. I will tell you, I will tell you this though, I love the name because obviously you know what it puts me in the mind of. Like. Girl, <laughs> and the crazy thing about that, Trina, is that um, the really crazy thing about that is that I used to buy those Tropical Punch now and later by the box. Yeah. <laughs> Literally by the box. And so, um, you know, like one day, I think I was just trying to figure out what I wanted the name for the nonprofit to be and what I wanted it to mean and and all that and I was like you know I could just do the now and later effect where these of the these are the effects of what happens when you provide this care right now and you follow up with you know some stuff later and I was just like all right that's that's it <laughs> I, I love it I love it because you know that's a delicacy in our in our neighborhood <laughs> Yes, it is. Um. <laughs> yes. Look, y'all need to go follow it. Follow her page. I love what she did for the, um, for the, I about to say the inauguration. <laughs> Before we got to that point, um, the work that she was putting in to make sure that we were all about voting and using our, uh, our voices to vote. Um, oh, tell me a little it's bit. The voting for me. It's the voting for me. I was like, first of all, let's look at this flyer. <laughs> I stopped. I was like, ooh, I like that. I feel that in my spirit. <laughs> it's the vote for yeah. me because you know our people don't vote. Like, what do know, Well, we do now. We do, we do now. now. We, do, we now. do now. Yes, honey. We do now. It's a beautiful thing. I will say this. I love the fact that they every time someone tries to stop the movement, you always make it worse for yourself because now you've awakened. Like, yeah. A mm -hmm. whole heap of people, as my grandma would say, a heap. <laughs> a whole heap of folks are, are like we're woke. Mm -hmm. I hate using that term, but but that's what it is, you know. Like we've been asleep. <laughs> a lot of us. Some have of been. us have mm -hmm. been asleep, and some of us have. I feel like some of us have been kind of almost too woke. Like, yeah, way too woke. Yeah, you know, like. This is this is not necessarily if we had a choice today of what we could do to elect the president. This isn't necessarily what I would choose. You know, no. like all of the systems that are in place are not in place to favor us. Right. But that's not a reason not to do it. Like we have to figure out a way to make their systems that they meant for our harm work for our good. And that's what we did in the situation. And I mm -hmm. feel like as long as we continue to hold them accountable. Exactly. Which, you know, okay, rock your chucks and pearls, but tell your girl Kamala uh, <laughs> is stuff that needs to be done, you know, um, and, and Biden, you know, making sure holding them accountable. Not only that, I feel like maybe even more importantly, on a local level, <laughs> um, making sure that everybody is understanding what's going on and that it's still important to get out there and vote. Yeah. Um, I feel like we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay too. And I love, this is what I said about 2020. I was like, I know that it's been crazy. There has been a lot of death. There has been a lot of things happening, but 
we have literally seen something switch that has never, this has yeah. never happened before. And the fact that we've gotten to see Georgia turn blue. Like, look, first of all, I ain't never. <laughs> I, was, I was shocked at the fact that it was even a like a might happen. That's what I'm saying. Before it actually did happen. Just, and Texas was almost I blue. I, I was like, whoa. Like, that shows you that, like, the resistance and all that hardship that we have to go through with certain things, like, it's really polishing you. It's really not always just, mm -hmm. like, you know, putting you under or anything. You really are creating new, something new. So it's exciting to see. Yep. We're going to see what they do. You know, I hold them accountable. I'm going to pray for them, just like I prayed for Trump when he was in office. Um, I, yeah. pray, I pray for our government officials because I need them to be covered. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to move on away from that topic because I can say so it's your lot. fault that Trump is, it's your fault that Trump is uh, still uh, walking amongst us. I'm first joking. All, look, look, first of all, he a child of, look, even though he don't act like it, he a child of God. But, you know, it ain't always easy to pray for the people you got to pray for. I'm going to plug that in there. But <laughs> I'm not going to get to them pearly gates and God be like, so uh, you couldn't pray for that man? But nah, what had happened? Nah, I'm trying to get in them gates <laughs> so I can see, so I can meet J Jesus and I can meet God and then I can go find Tina Marie. That's my girl. Okay. <laughs> girl, I, I saw Tina Marie at the airport one time and she was so cool. Like she was so down to earth. I didn't even get a picture with her. I love her. Can you that, believe that? I can't believe that. I would be like, hey, Tina, can, lady, can I get a pic though? Girl, I, I, took a, I took a picture for somebody with yeah. her. And I, I, like, I, I, one. <laughs> I think she was just so cool and just so down to earth that we were just like talking like about what you've been up to and what's coming and just like how you know just catching up and and then she was gone <laughs> She's a, i love Tina marie that's one of my favorite artists of like all time like people don't be putting enough respect on my girl name they really I don't know. <laughs> yeah they really do I'm not with you. I'm right well, tell me a little <laughs> bit about your time in theater, like like the love for theater. Tell me about that. Girl, I started, I have just always loved theater. Mm -hmm. um, when I was really small, I told my mom I wanted to be an actress. Mm -hmm. I actually told her that I wanted to do a Raven Simone was doing. We were watching the Cosby show. She paid, and, paid. Oh, I know. <laughs> paid, paid. If we could have just followed through with that. <laughs> but but um but yeah and then I went to one of the elementary schools I was at um a lady pulled me aside and she said will you be in show choir Miss Stout her daughter Donna went there and she said will you be in show choir she explained it to me she wanted to talk to my mom and she said you're just always smiling you got such a big smile that's why she wanted me to to, to participate and I did. I was in fourth grade then, and I stayed um, with her through eighth grade, and then had like all of the side improv classes, and then did theater some um, in high school. But honestly, I feel like performance, because um, you know, I was in band, I was mm -hmm. in choir, cheerleader, I was in she did it all. Whatever my hands on yeah I was in everything I just feel like it was um very cathartic for me um and maybe that was part of the reason why a lot of the things that were going on didn't hit the way they hit sometimes now when I think about them because I had an outlet um so yeah I've just always loved theater um I went to New York for a while did some stuff at the Stella Stella Adler studio um, and then I've done a lot of stuff in New Orleans to theater. Um, so yeah, there, I, I love theater. <laughs> is, is, that, is, is that what brought you to New Orleans? No, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I went to New Orleans because I was bored. I was living in, in Atlanta. I went to Atlanta first when mm -hmm. I left Texas. And... I just got tired of Atlanta fast. Like maybe after a year and a half, I had done a lot of film stuff, um, like extras. I've been an extra. They were using my car in movies. I was oh. just doing, yeah, I was just doing whatever I could do. Um, 
and film just to kind of like be around it and, and kind of pick up on it, mm-hmm. see if I was actually going to like film. Um, and I just got tired of like, um, I feel like Atlanta, for one, I really didn't move there because I, I moved there because it was closer than New York. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to go to New York, but my parents were like, well, Atlanta's closer and it's a lot of black people there that (laughs) are like running things, owning things. It's a good place for you to start. So I went there and um, I just felt like, like in New York, it's like a challenge. Like you really there with a lot of other people that want to do what you're doing. And so it's a good challenge yourself. But in Atlanta, everybody's kind of like, I'm a rapper, you know, like... (laughs) I, I had did this thing and I'm a rapper and um, I'm a famous actress because I've been a extra 20 times. <laughs> and I was just like, how is this going to work? Like, how am I really going to learn anything from being around people that feel like they've already arrived because <laughs> they recorded right. a song in the closet, you know? So I just got tired of it. And I literally, Trina, I told my sister, I was like, I want to leave. I don't know where I want to go. So I put all my stuff in the storage. I applied at places all over the world. And we packed up the car and went to New Orleans for Essence. And on our way to Essence, on our way to New Orleans, my sister got a job. And then I got an interview. Wow. <laughs> Look at God. I had an interview like that week. Yeah. So that's how I got to New Orleans. And wow. Yeah, it's that's crazy. amazing. I love it. Look, I love that because <laughs> people be so afraid to leave. And I'm like, I tell my students all the time, look, home will always be home. You mm-hmm. want to come back? Come back. But you need to leave. You need to leave. At least yeah. leave a few and, hours. And, like leave. <laughs> yeah. And you need to do it a lot of a lot of times. Um, I, I'll tell this story real quick. When I did gymnastics when I was trying out for cheer, I did gymnastics and I was like 15 Mm -hmm. and the guy told me you're too old to do gymnastics. And I couldn't understand that because I was only 15. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to tell you to do, you're going to think I'm crazy. And he said, and that's because of your age, it comes with wisdom. Yeah. And he said, Mm -hmm. these three-year-olds, I can tell them to run, do 10 backflips and jump off the building and they're going to do it and they're going to land it. Yeah, you, your fear, you're going to have to fight against your fear, you know? So a lot of the stuff that I did while I was younger needed to be done then. It was crazy. It was very crazy. We didn't even tell my mama. We didn't even tell my mama that we were going to New Orleans. Right. And we had been there, had the interviews and all that, you know? (laughs) Look. We didn't even tell her, you know, um, because we knew it was like crazy. But um, a lot of the stuff that I did then moving to Atlanta, moving to New York, um, without having anywhere to live, just going because I got into school. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. And I needed to do it in my 20s because I know that now in my 30s, if I like I'd be tired. I just I just can't see it. <laughs> I just can't see me doing some of the stuff that I did um that was fearless then. I can't see it being called fearless. Name name your school, name your colleges name your schools real quick. Name the schools that you went to again really quick. The uh your colleges. Oh, we oh, went I, to in, okay, I mean, now let me say this. No, the school you went to in New York is what I meant. Stella Adler. <laughs> Stella Adler. Adler. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I didn't do a full program at Stella Adler, which is is kind of weird for people because I enjoy learning. I do enjoy learning, but I didn't enjoy college. Yeah. I went to Texas Women's University and then I came home and did some stuff at TCC mm-hmm. and I did not like school and it was strange for me because I've always you know some of my high school teachers gonna be like what you like school but I've always liked school I mm-hmm. enjoy learning things but I just couldn't get with school I felt like with me working I felt like I was sacrificing my dream you for, were for school <laughs> And you were <laughs> to, to learn about my dream, you know. Yeah. And I didn't want to do it that way. Now I probably I am trying to get, you know get back into school now, but um, but yeah. So I decided to do that program, 
Um, it's the program that the students, uh, some of the students at NYU use, the Tisch School of the Arts, they do some of the classes over there. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, you ain't got $40,000 to go to NYU. Yep. Just go ahead and do this little program and you can get some of the same, um, learn some of the same skills from some of the same teachers um, um, as them. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad you shared that because that's my whole point. That's why I asked because a lot of kids feel like they have to go to college. And I honestly feel like you don't have to if you don't want to. And if you feel like you're wanting to go to another place, go live, live life first. I think that's important yeah. to feel like it's okay to do that because everyone's trying to please their parents, but their parent is not going to live for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you grown you. now, baby. You got to go. Yeah. You, <laughs> you got to, to go. Have to really you have to really go for it i remember when i went to new york i didn't have anywhere to live i was a uh, night auditor at a hotel and i was like i'm just gonna use my um hotel rate and i'll yeah. just you know get the discount until i can find somewhere to live and that stopped after a while because like after a short while because i was like you know i'm working overnight I'm going to school during the day so i'm spending all this money just to be in the room for a few hours you know, so I just yep. stopped doing it. I was just finding somewhere. I would go somewhere and take a shower, change, go to school, and then go back to work overnight. And I just was like, some days I was just sitting in the train station, just waiting. Girl, I would sleep in Starbucks, everything. I didn't have to put out you gotta do. in there. Yeah, and my mom would just be like, you need to come home. And I'm just like, no, I'm not. Because <laughs> for what? What am I going to come back to? Yeah, what you coming back for? But you know. That that yeah. explains a lot about your passion, though. That that helps. No, I'm just saying it. It just was a it was a time for me to learn a lot about myself and how much I'm willing to do for something that I, you know, something that I really enjoy doing. Yeah. And how far I'm willing to go for it, you know. Yeah. So it's it's necessary, you know. Um, I think that you can always go back to school. Yeah. Um, and I think that. What I really think, Trina, is that if I had continued to go to school, then I would have gone for theater for sure. And now that I have lived and done theater and lived, I really feel like that even though I really do enjoy theater and, you know, really enjoy it, like would be homeless to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, that's real. <laughs> I feel like my purpose is really I mean this is really cheesy but I feel like my purpose is kind of inspiring people kind of inspiring yeah. people to be the best version of themselves yeah. reach the highest level and so going to school now I would go to something go for something totally different I do feel like being in theater prepared me um I feel like doing all those activities I did in high school and living in all the different places I've lived has prepared me to be a speaker yeah um, and I think that I would have continued to go to school just to be doing it, just because that's what you're supposed to do. Society. And I would end up getting a degree and then still needing to go back and get another degree for what I now know is really my purpose. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I do feel like it could be beneficial um, to not go to school. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm just saying school doesn't matter or anything like that you know it's, for some it, people it doesn't though it's for some people it doesn't yeah it's up to you you get to choose get to choose just be willing to um I always say you just gotta have that conversation just be like look I respectfully understand what you're trying to tell me parents mm -hmm. but this is my life <laughs> you I know tried, you know I tried it and I remember when I decided to drop out and my mom had um you know how they think they liked and talk to the family and they're going to come talk to you. And my, my, my sister <laughs> just years older than me, she came and tried to, to talk to me. And I was, she was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe you can call the professors and they'll let you do. And I was just like, no, oh. not, cause I don't want to do that. And she was like, I mean, after a couple of little different, she was like, okay, she don't want to do it. Like, yep. not, it, it's not, pen, what I'm saying is not penetrating her. Like she does not, She's not feeling it, you know? So yeah. once you once you're an adult, you have to really sit back and think about what you want, how you want your life to be, um, what you're willing to do to get that life. Yeah. And 
not mess around, not waste any time, you know, not waste any time. Cause you can't afford to, you can't afford it, to, especially if you go on an alternative route, cause you don't yeah. have no room. It don't wait on you. Yeah. At all. It does not. And you have to be willing to sacrifice for it. Cause that's the major key. They'd be like, I want this, but they're not willing to work for it. Yeah. So yep. Yep. you're willing to work for it, people. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk to you about like having a circle around you and what it takes to be in your circle. So like, what is your five non-negotiables when it comes to the people you keep around you? Honesty. Mm-hmm. Ding. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't I can't do the lies. I yeah. just can't. I, I I can't. I don't have the energy for it and and I don't handle disrespect well. So honesty. Um I definitely think that I kind of have a little pause about saying having, you know, goals and all that, because everybody just doesn't. Some people are content and that's fine too. But I think um, at least recognizing goals or or whether you're done with your goals, like yeah. whether, you know. Um, but um, so those things, those two things, um, I would say under being understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's important. And I'm trying to, I think what's, what's maybe catching me now is like, I'm examining whether I have these things, but, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's funny. Cause that's why I asked the question because yeah. I always, do, that's the life coach in me. Oh, um, <laughs> I always ask that question because I feel like it's important to like, we teach people how to treat us by how we treat ourselves. So mm-hmm. if you, if you do these things, like, I'm sure you try your best to do those three things. Yeah. your relationship so whatever you plan, that's what people gonna pull out yeah and, and yeah. most people are not gonna stick around because you're not gonna let them stick around that long if they're not exuding the same energy right. you know yeah oh. and and not even that trina the the crazy thing about that is i probably if you if you get that close to me i probably would let you stick around because i have I'm, I get very easily attached to people. And that's not to say like I'm clingy or I have to have you, anything like that, but I just mm-hmm. don't do goodbye. Yeah. And so since I do that about myself, I try to make sure that the boxes are kind of checked. You know what I'm saying? Early. Because then <laughs> you're attached to the person that is just not good for you or whatever. Um, so with that being said, another one of the things, because I'm such a giving person, and, and, and I, you know, hate to kind of say that, but I am a very given person and very nurturing. I want to take care of everybody. I want everybody to kind of be comfortable. And, you know, if you, if you need some kind of special oil, like, or something like to feel good, like I'm going to try to figure out how to make it. <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> you know, just loving. That's a good I thing. Need, yeah. I need people around me that know how to tell me when to like, stop. Yeah. Like, if not, I'll just give, 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 give. And if you're someone that kind of is okay with that, then you're just going to be receiving all this stuff. So either mm-hmm. someone that can recognize when I need to like chill or or somebody that can reciprocate. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping for the latter for you because <laughs> no, for real, because it's like, it's, you don't want to have to like, that's just who you are. And I know it's yeah. hard because you want to have, you, you need to have boundaries to protect yourself. But at the same time, it's like God gives to us, un, you know, all the time. Yeah. So it's like, I see why we adopt that. Yeah. You just, I just feel like it's crazy that it just feels like part of me is kind of like, sometimes I feel like I'm doing too much or like, um, like I'm just, you know, like just not doing something that I feel like I really want to do. And you yeah. don't want to feel that way, you yeah. know? So it's important for me to have people around me. Otherwise I'll be drained. Um, yeah. I'll be doing everything that I'm doing in my life. And then also trying to help you do everything in yours. And if you don't, 
now eventually, you know, hopefully I'll get a little bit better at it, you know, but I need that right now. Mm-hmm. And then the fifth thing, um, I would say someone that is funny, you know, fun, mm-hmm. um, can take a joke, likes to have a good time, you know, just those That's kinds necessary. of like so Martin, yeah. yes, you know, can pick up my the, the when I say a quote, you can right. it. like I need that. Like I don't want my <laughs> jokes to just fall flat because you haven't watched the Martin where he's pulling the dog around. Who <laughs> <laughs> say shit? <laughs> you know, I need I need you to know what I'm talking about. Is that so, your favorite episode? That's the one I think about most when I think about like just dying laughing at him because girl, Martin is just so silly. He was just so serious pulling that dog around. <laughs> that dog was just on the ground, just like <laughs> being drug across the floor. So, is so crazy. yeah, that's probably one, at least one of my favorite episodes. I have the whole, I have the whole, all the seasons. Yeah, DVD. man, Martin. <laughs> My favorite one is the one where they he was beating up that little rat looking thing. Girl. <laughs> yes. They the no puppy. damn puppy. <laughs> the puppy. Yeah, that That's, was the puppy too. I said, who who approved of these animals? Because they didn't even look. Girl, and it was like, it was like on wheels or something. Like how I just rolled in. They had a remote control. <laughs> mm-hmm. Girl, that yeah. was a- there he is. Martin yeah. show is class. That was a classic, man. Yeah. That's too crazy. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. You gotta be <laughs> fun, funny, you know, not yeah. negative and just, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. That's a big deal. I'm glad that you can voice that because like I said, there's a lot of people in the world who don't know like what they need in their lives. Like they don't they don't even have enough boldness to speak it. So I'm glad that you're able to like verbalize what you need because it's important and we need people to understand that's important for themselves. Um, Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, what role does God play in your life? I feel like God um, and even just spirituality, just, it plays a really big part in my life. Like I'll be honest with you. I feel like, okay, so I was raised um, Baptist, Mm -hmm. but I feel like lately I have adopted just more of a non-traditional approach to like religion. Yeah. Um, I do believe in God, but I also want to like um, align my chakras <laughs> and like make sure that like my, in, like the energy around me, like, I don't want to, I don't know if it's weird to say that I don't want to put it all on God, but like, if I'm around you and I feel like you don't have good energy, hmm then that's kind of like on me to like not just be around you no more instead of just trying to like pray it away or speak in yeah. tongues, you know, do all that. Like, so I feel like I've kind of just been um, kind of really on that wavelength lately. Like just yeah. trying to be in tune with myself. I feel like I have a different relationship with God, maybe a more um, expanded understanding of God than I would say I was kind of raised to um and and I like that (laughs) I like that I feel like it's a a relationship that everybody else may not understand and I don't care if you do or not because it's my relationship yeah um and yeah so I feel like it definitely informs like everything about me what I do what I'm willing to accept um I feel like it's informed everything about my growth um and what I was saying earlier as far as relinquishing some of the control and the mm-hmm. need to know what's gonna happen and and all of that it's like just relax just be <laughs> it's gonna be fun everything is gonna be good like you know just stay in the the flow stay in alignment and and it'll all be good so it's definitely like um it's strange that I feel like my relationship with God has changed a lot and and that I feel like it's a lot different than what I was in what I was raised for it to be but I like it more you Mm -hmm. know 
So I don't know if any of this is making sense. It makes perfect sense to me because look, you have to remember when we're younger, let's be honest, we go to church because we told we going to church. Yeah. You know, like it's kind of pushed on you. It's not necessarily like I gravitated to it, you know, to God. Like now it's kind of like you're building your own relationship with God. And it's like yeah. you and him and you understand that it's you and him. Yeah. So it's just different when you know it for yourself and you know that you know that you know. Yeah. So. And it's and it's I wish I could explain it better, but it's it's kind of like when I try to explain it to people, they don't really get it, you know. And I like that. Like I like that you might not necessarily understand, but it's still good enough for me. And I'm not trying to qualify my relationship with God against how you feel about it. You know, right. this is what it is. You know, it's different for everybody though. The relationship yeah. levels because we're on different levels. Like you don't know, like, and I think it was interesting that you said um you feel like if somebody gives you bad energy, you need to get away. Like you don't have to sit there and be there. I feel like that's good stewardship. Because yeah. I mean it's saying in the Bible, protect your heart, like all yeah. of it. Like, so I do think that part of the things that we get into, sometimes we allow that in. So yeah. you have to be very like diligent about who you let around you the things that you yeah. allow in your space your atmosphere all of that is important yeah. so I'm glad that you said that yeah very being, important. Being, being mindful it's really it has been I don't want to say really tough but it I think initially it was just kind of tough for me to like break out and kind of do something that I felt like um I don't know if my family would be like disapproving of it or anything but I have to do again like we talked about earlier I have to do what I know feels right for me and yeah. I feel like um just going to bible study and going to church and even just reading the bible like I don't feel like I don't feel like it's sufficient for me like I feel like I need to be mindful of who's in my space and I need to be mindful of what I'm carrying around you do like moment to moment, you know what I'm saying? And yep. and I also feel like um, that in a lot of ways, God has equipped me with a lot of things. And I'm not going to just every little step of the way, pray and be like, it's a cliff. I don't know, God, what you think? Should I go over the cliff? I need your guidance on this, you know, just like, <laughs> hallelujah, just let you know what I'm saying? Like, girl, you know what to do in this situation. Just go. I put you with this wisdom and, and, and go for it or either you not, you know? Exactly. And, and yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Especially if God already has shown you, like, that, if he already shown you once, you know that he's going to be there. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. Some stuff shouldn't have to keep saying over and over again. I'm sure God will probably be like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> No, I'm sure he don't. He just don't do nothing. He just be like, I know, just like looking at looking down, like, okay, all right, bro. Uh, uh, <laughs> have you had a V8? <laughs> like, probably oh, no, no. annoyed. You know? That's what I'm saying. But, probably super annoyed. Yeah. But hey, what can we do? What can we do? Oh, um, <laughs> so do you believe that your purpose is a journey or a destination? Um, I think it's both. I think that um, as far as, you know, I feel like my purpose is kind of multi-layered maybe. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like with some things you can arrive at it and be good with what has happened. Um, and with other things, you know, it's, it's more about what you pick up on the way there and um, it's something that's going to always be, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's just a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. So how do you define success and happiness? Um, success and happiness is, is one of those things, again, that is going to be different from person to person. Um, for me right now, it's, it's, feeling like I am in flow 
And that's re- it's really that simple for me right now. Yeah. Like, it's really that simple for me. Like, the other day I was uh, talking to someone and after, like, almost immediately after, I felt like in my spirit, I felt like that ain't in flow. Like, you, what I don't even remember what it was. Whatever I said or whatever I was kind of like freaking out about, whatever my dilemma was, I was just like, that's not in flow. Like Mm -hmm. all of these feelings that you're feeling are causing you all of this extra when you just stay in flow. Yep. You know, you'll be happy. And and the success, you know, like even as far as like right now I'm in Texas doing some stuff with my mom and kind of help her and I have stuff to you know that I could be doing with my businesses Uh, um, (laughs) just so many different things that I could be doing and I told my sister like I can't I just can't worry about them you Mm -hmm. know like I have to trust that that when I when I'm able to pick it back up it's at the right time yeah instead of obsessing over it knowing that it's something that I can't do but still obsessing over it and it's just not a solution it's not going to change anything you know it's not it's gonna make you sick yeah it's like, gonna make you sick literally. so I feel like kind of just staying in flow with things um checking in with myself being honest with myself about um how I feel how I'm expressing myself what I want what I don't want mm-hmm. um, how I'm treating people. Um, those are the things that make me happy. Like yeah. when I sit down at night, if I feel like, now nah, I fuss at my son. Uh, so I don't want y'all to think that I know because he gets fussed at because he needs <laughs> to. But, <laughs> but if there's ever like a day where I feel like, girl, you went too far with that. Like, like that affects me. That affects yeah. me. Um, and not even just as a parent, but as a person, you know, I want to be, careful about what I'm doing you know how what I'm doing could be affecting him as a person as a yeah as an adult black man you know not even just right now um so yeah checking it my checking in with myself when I can check in with myself and be honest about something that I've done wrong and correct it Mm -hmm. that makes me feel so good and accomplished and and just like I'm really doing the right thing, you know, and yeah. I'm one of those cheesy people that feels good about like, I'm one of the, I, I like turning money if I find it, like, <laughs> you know, so like doing, like knowing that I'm doing the right thing and knowing that is because I've been honest with me, not because somebody had to come tell me about myself or I had to see him mm-hmm. crying because I hurt his feelings or, you know, anything like that. But but just because I said, Jamie, you tripping. You need mm-hmm. to figure Like that makes me feel so good. So I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older or what, but those are the things that make me feel like I'm being successful. Because being you're so aware. Being honest and, and self-correcting along the way and learning those are the things that make me feel successful yeah I will say that you know with us growing up those things kind of shift and and now we're more like how you just explained it um I'm I'm sure when we were younger it was like oh when I get this car (laughs) when I get you know when you get things um yeah when you're younger you think about things when you get older you think about empathy you think about compassion and feelings and things like that so Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's a great self-awareness is the most beautiful thing you can experience. And once you get it, it changes the game because you can acknowledge that you're not in flow and you know when people are not right for you and you yep. know this ain't going to end well. So yep. let me go ahead and hit that stage left. <laughs> yep. And you know, you know, self-awareness is, is cool. It's good, but it's also just having the same lesson over. Mm-hmm. How many times can you have this lesson? before you go on and get it in and get it together you know Mm -hmm. so yeah you know and it's just um I feel like it's like I feel a new confidence about um things just coming together yeah like 
you know, yeah, in my twenties, I would have definitely said something about career wise or something like that is, is what success is to me mm-hmm. and being able to do it on my own. I would have definitely said something like that, but now I know that stuff is going to come. I know yeah. it is. Um, it's coming. So I need to focus. Yeah. I just have to focus on being a good person and how I'm making people feel and, um, and my mark, the mark I'm leaving on the world. If I never get to be an executive assistant again, if I never get to do theater again, if I never, you know, get to be a mom again, or, you know, whatever, whatever, if I, if all of this ends, I need to focus on how I am as a human. Yeah. And that's what matters. That's what really matters to me. Yeah. Yeah. And that changes the game. That changes the game because you're building character. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Look at, so grown up. Jesus, look (laughs) at us. So proud. I've always been grown, but yeah, I'm feeling really grown this year, this 33rd year. Yes, because it's, yeah, Jesus here. (laughs) Welcome. I can't wait. When do you turn 33? Oh, I already turned 33. Oh, you already turned 33. Okay, because I was about to say, I'm in my Jesus year too. So, yeah, it's just different. in August. It's yeah. it, it it hits different though. You really do feel like, well, the way I took it was like, okay, when I first named it my Jesus year, I was like, I know a lot of things are about to shift. Like I could feel it, literally mm-hmm. feel it in my spirit. They're like, yeah, they're gonna start shifting, and I'm gonna prepare for those moments. I'm gonna prepare for whatever it is he's aligning me with, because I know I feel yeah. it. So I gotta act now. So that's my yeah. faith. My and faith move. <laughs> I didn't name mine my Jesus year. Um, I don't know. I just didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't. I didn't even get that until I heard other people saying it. But um, mm-hmm. but I am big on gardening and all of that. So I had yeah. a big, a big, very small <laughs> brunch, um, like a garden party kind of Aww. brunch. And I just look at it as I'm blossoming, you know. Yeah. Um, and pulling up weeds and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's how I've looked at it this year. I feel like, like I'm just so much happier, you know, even, even the people that I would say 2020 was like the year that I lost the most people, not cause they died. You mm-hmm. know, these people are still alive. They're just they not just part of my it. life anymore. They just shed it off. Of yeah. Me. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so usually that would just be something that I would just be so down about, you know, like I just do not, I have not handled goodbye as well. And I am just so proud of myself for the way that, you know, it still affects me. Sometimes I think about people all the time, mm-hmm. um, all of them. Um, but it's just not debilitating me in the same way that, that it would have maybe in prior years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm okay with that. You know, like I'm happy about that. I'm happy that I can feel happy without yeah. that attachment that that it's not that my happiness isn't attached to anything or anybody that I'm just happy just cuz, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, girl, I guess I'm getting grown. <laughs> <laughs> what what you what you're describing sounds more like joy to me. Yes, that's good. That's yeah. good. Because it's That's, like, you know, joy is not attached to anything. Not depending upon anything. You're right. Yeah. Joy joy is not attached to anything like that we can tangibly touch. Right. You know? So yeah. that's that's so beautiful. That I love it when people have that moment because it's like, mm-hmm. man, it's you're on track to like really getting to where you're supposed to be. Cause mm-hmm. you you're in the right space. Well, thank so. you. Yeah, I'm happy and you know, I know that like those songs and church say the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. And you hear that and you be like, okay. <laughs> Were you young it's, true. Like- <laughs> it's like, it's true. It's, it's like true. nothing that happens regardless of what it is or how bad it's been or anything. Like it just hasn't taken it away. It just hasn't. So you're not giving yeah. it away. That's the, that's the difference. You have a choice. Okay, I'm your life coach. <laughs> I <have> a <laughs> it's true though. It's really true. You really have the option to give it. We give it away all the time. But once yeah, you make that decision, true. you experience and you like, ain't nothing for us to get in the way of this. You keep it. 
Yeah. You're right, <laughs> Trina. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> Man, for real. I had to learn that lesson the hard way. So trust me, like, mm-hmm. that's why I ain't nothing just to, nah, you can keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not giving yep. it up this time. So, yeah. Well, I got one more question for you. Okay. If you knew then what you know now, would you change anything? Nope. Nope. I can say that I can say that without even thinking like nope I wouldn't change a thing I'm grateful you know I'm proud of myself I feel like I still have a long way to go but I feel like I feel like um I'm just not supposed to be here you know like you know just coming from what I come from Mm-hmm. statistically and all that like I'm just not supposed to be here um I'm not supposed to be in some of the rooms that I'm in some of the conversations that I'm in the places mm-hmm. that I've been and all of that you know so I'm super grateful I wouldn't change a thing um yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't, I'm grateful for all the experiences, even, you know, even with my parents being on drugs, I feel like just being able to witness two people be on drugs and they're not now, you know, you saw the whole transition, man. You don't ever hear, you don't, you don't hear that often, not the stuff they was doing, child, but, um, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) but you know, you don't, you don't hear that. And I'm, that's not to say that my parents are perfect, but, um, I'm proud of them and I'm I'm happy that that that's what I've come from. You yeah. know, and it, it has just witnessing that has informed myself, it has informed me about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and what just like, you know, I've already explained a lot of what I've gone through or done or whatever, mm-hmm. but just how much more I could do. Yeah. How much more how strong, you know, we really can be when we really want to be. I wouldn't change a thing. Nope. That's what's up. That, that it's pride and true faith is what I say. Yep. And, and I love the fact that you have a relationship with your parents and that's been sustained because, you know, for some people it wouldn't be sustained. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, so. we had, I had my days. But. Yeah. We've all, yeah. <laughs> you're going to have your days. You're human. But the fact yeah. that you're, you're fighting for it because you're there. Yeah. Yeah, now I love them. You know, they make fun of me now that I'm the parent and I'm, <laughs> you know, and all that stuff like that. Like I'm in Texas and my dad called my mom and said, she said she was coming to get you together. I'm coming to get you together next, sir. Are you telling on me? <laughs> you ready? Yeah, so no, they make fun of me all the time because they say I'm the parent now. It's like I'm the parent, but I love them and I'm just so proud of just, you know, everything that we've come through, not allowing how it should be or or um what the statistics say or any of that not allowing any of that to um to stop us yeah so i'm no i wouldn't change nothing i'll say it over and over and over if you let me (laughs) (laughs) and you shouldn't change anything like honestly I'm extremely proud of you and I'm grateful. Thank, Thank you for giving you. me your time, first of all. Thank you. Um, but yes, it's amazing like to see how far all of us have come. Like just to me, I, it's cool to see people come from where we come from and still be here and still be in our <laughs> right mind and all yes. that stuff because we've seen a lot. But yes. um, I'm extremely grateful that you are uh, a human living and breathing and helping people and you will be impacting even more lives moving forward. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. And thank you, <laughs> Trina, for, I think it's so cool that, you know, not only to have somebody that's like local, you know, to want you to do something, but like a peer, mm-hmm. like, I feel like if you, if you was with me at Tech, you saw me in my worst day. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> we, had the worst, we had some days, we had some days, everything, oh attitude. <laughs> Oh, I was rough. I was rough around the edges. Like I'd be wanting to just track down all my teachers and just apologize. I was like, you I'm little. not doing that. <laughs> I'm not sitting in the hall while you walk. No, I'm not. I'm getting ready to go to Burger King. I see when I, you know, like 
I was just rough around the edges. So I feel like if you were around me then and can still see past all that to even want me to do this, like, I just think that is so cool. And I appreciate you and all of the work you're putting in. I'm super proud of you as well for just everything that you're doing. And when I say everything, I mean every like you got your hand, like you're doing a lot, you know. So uh, just super proud of you and appreciative um, that you would invite me into your space um, to converse like this. I think it's so neat and. You know, don't stop, girl. You know what you're doing. <laughs> I definitely want. I'll feel be like session soon. <laughs> Come on and book it. Come on and book it. Let me plug my own stuff. Come to level 27 coachingcom <laughs> Plug my own stuff. Nah, that I receive all of that, and I thank you so much. I I feel like God is going to use us in a great way. So I'm just going to keep letting Him drive. I'm just passenger, so. But yeah. Thank but you. I,